everyone and welcome to our show. We're going to be discussing about where the future of the Nigerian economy lies. And in discussing about the future of the Nigerian economy, we're going to be subtopicking on diversifying the Nigerian economy. With us, we have today Mr. Phillips, we have Mr. Aremu, we have Mr. Bajon, and we have Mr. Henry. So before we start discussing about diversifying Nigeria's economy, I'd like us to discuss about where our problems started. From the end of last year in 2015 to the beginning of this year, the Nigerian economy has seen several landslides. For the first time in 12 years, the oil prices fell below $30 per barrel. Investors dumped their stocks. For our foreign res reserves were you know, depleted. And the value of the Naira depreciated. So where did this problem arise? What happened? How did we get here? Um, thank you very much for inviting me to this program. I am glad that the, this generation, we are beginning to talk about issues that affected um, our economy and Nigeria as a whole. Over the years, right from my days in the junior secondary school, we've read and heard about the diversification of the Nigerian economy. And I'm glad that our generation, we're actually talking about this, but we need to take a leap from talking about these issues. Over the years, Nigerian issues have been discussed, but we need to take a leap from discussing these issues to actually taking holistic actions into some of these issues we've read and we've talked about over these years. Nigeria's economy, as we all know, is a mono, uh, mono economy. Our major export or our major source of revenue is um, the oil. And I'm happy that if you've seen the 2016 budget by President Mohamed Buhari, you can see that the non-oil sector uh, is taking the lead uh, in revenue generation uh, away from the oil sector. And in the course of this program, we will talk about some of these sectors and what needs to be done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other opinions on how this problem came to be? Um, the problem of the Nigerian economy, like Henry said, because the economy is a monocultural economy, we've been dependent on oil and it has generated 70% of our revenue since 2002. Last year, with the discovery of shale, it crashed the oil price. Oil prices were 150 as of February. By the end of December uh, 2015, oil prices were $50. Now they are almost below $30, which is a lot of percentage, more than 70%. So that was where the problem was, because we were solely depending on one export, on the cultural economy. Um, to further expatiate on what he said, um, we've been hearing about economic diversification for over, over, over the years, over 40 years since um, after the Civil War. Since we were young, we've been hearing about these things. So to, to, to answer your question about where it all started, we have to look back to um, the time we got independence from the British. Um, during that time, oil had just been discovered in Nigeria and um, we had, uh, were dependent on agriculture and mining for our income, for our GDP. But after the Civil War, most investors left. So, and um, the government of uh, Obasanjo, the then military regime, decided to concentrate on um, oil as a source of revenue for us. So over time, because of this, over time, um, our, our budget has been dependent on this oil. So if you look back in the 70s, we were less dependent on oil than now. Yes, over the years, because of the failing infrastructure and various things, um, we became dependent on oil because it's easier. And then because um, the manufacturing and other sectors employ more of Nigeria, this led to poverty and the situation we are now. Because if our budget, like he said, 70% is dependent on oil, then if the prices go down, then it affects um, Nigeria and the budget. So there's one major point that we've been able to get from how this problem started. And that problem is we've been talking so much about diversification, but we haven't done anything about it. So the next topic I want to bring up is the stance the central bank has taken since this problem started. 
the central bank has refused to you know decrease the exchange rate in the face of the sharp falls against the dollar it's kept its stance on keeping the exchange rate the same um, at the same level that it is and it's the central bank has been backed up by our president Muhammad Muhammadu Buhari but do you think this is a, a good you know this is a good method do you think that despite the calls from different international organizations to devalue the Naira, and the central bank is still keeping the exchange rate at the rate it is. Do you think this is a good stance to take? Do you think it's going to further you know, affect our Naira and affect our economy? What, what are your thoughts? You know, um, the issue of uh, devaluation of uh, the Naira or other currencies um, are issues that come with um, the nature of our economy as it stands today. Remember that over uh, 30 years ago, when President Muhammad Obaye was the military, then military head of state in Nigeria, the issue of the evaluation of Naira was also discussed. I believe that the physical policies and the monetary policies that this present administration are embarking on, and President Muhammad's hard stance on this devaluation of Naira is born out of his experience of course, you, you know that there is a big gap or big difference from 1985 when he was a demonstrator of state to 2016 as we are today. But he's, he has this experience that I don't want to do this and he has other backup reasons. Like I told my friend um, over, the, over when I was engaging an argument over this same issue, the issue of the violation of Naira has to do with what you have also in your economy. For example, the Nigerian economy, if we devalue this Naira, what do we have to export to the world? Okay, I have said it over and over again that for our economy to be diversified, three key sectors, or there are three key players, the government, the private sector, and the individuals. Now looking at it from the government angle, they've said no to um, uh, devaluation of Naira. This is best known to them. Now the private sectors, the, um, uh, the, uh, the CEOs and the rest of them, if we devalue this, this Naira, we are, uh, act as we are actually talking about now, what effect does it have on the private sector? Well, obviously, devaluing the Naira would cost us to increase our exports and it would cost us to reduce our imports, which our imports is one of our problems, Thank I you. Think. you. You have said it now. Now, what and what are we exporting to the world? We don't have nothing. Nigeria, we, we import virtually everything. And they cost some uh, services. They are not really helping matters. It's not their problem. I think we also get to that angle when, when we are talking about uh, when we get to the finances uh, or another aspect. But I think that devaluing the currency now is not the best thing for this country unless we run this import substitution method and we build our local economy, then we have much to export. Until then, we should be talking about this devaluation of, uh, of Naira. Usually, a uh, country devalues their currency when past economic mistakes have become too, too much to correct. So do you think that we might get to a point, Mr. Phillips, that we would not be able to correct our economic mistakes and we will have to devalue our currency? And do you think if we get to this point, it might be a little too late for the oil giant of Africa? Well, um, I do not pray for us to get to that stage where our economy will be beyond repairs. God forbid. Um, but at the same time, looking at the country the way it is today, um, I, I, I just believe uh, devaluing the currency should should be brought on the table for discourse. We, we should not just sit back to say, do not devalue. I have a strong stand. We should not devalue. We have experts. Experts should be brought on the table to discuss. Because you see, um, if I were to be in such a position, I will put the citizens first. The citizens first. It doesn't matter um, to what extent um, any organization, be it um, local or foreign, 
get affected negatively. But then the citizens first. If I devalue the Naira, what is the long-term um, effect on the citizens? What's the long-term effect on the economy? Place all this on the table. Experts giving you the pluses and the minuses. You should be able to tell the way forward. I don't think sitting back to say, I will not devalue based on the fact that um, you have some perception is enough. You get me? Devalue the currency, devalue the Naira for way forward. In as much as the citizens get um, the, the dividends of democracy, in as much as the citizens enjoy um, 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 governance, because if, if you ask me, the way the government of Nigeria had been over the years till date, correct me if I'm wrong, um, their policies had always been how it favors the rich. Devaluation or no devaluation, it's how the rich end up um, stocking his or her bank account with more of these currencies. So we should put the, the common man, the common citizens first to what effect will devaluation or non-devaluation have on these individuals? And if it's on the positive, on these people, we should devalue. If it's on the negative, we shouldn't. So experts should be brought on the table to have discourse. Mr. Shagun, do you agree that we should keep our options on the table? I think uh, the policies that the Central Bank of Nigeria are taking now are the best for the economy and for the individuals. Look at it this way. Henry said, we don't have anything to export. If you devalue the Naira, investors, it favors investors highly. They come in, they invest, they own the business. Uh, the profit, they might employ Nigerians. The profit of the business goes back to the investors' country. At the end of the day, when these employees retire, who is taking care of them? The Nigerian government, the Nigerian people. You will have to count that cost. But the policy is now that are going on is to help the Nigerian businesses catch up. We're trying to reduce the flow of dollar, reduce the flow of this and that. It's, it's tending to build up the Nigerian businessmen to bring competition against the foreigners. Now they say the investors cannot come because they, they, they are not sure what will happen to the Naira tomorrow. This is a chance for Nigerians to uh, Nigerian businesses to catch up. I mean, the purchasing power. If I want to start a business and I need to import equipment at this rate that the Naira is, I can't. If you devalue the Naira, I would need much more money to purchase those particular equipment. So in the long run, it, it might look like now things are ash. But in the long run, the policies, the standpoint, to show you that it favors the economy, IMF boss came to Nigeria to speak with them. Secretary of State, of America for commerce also came just two weeks ago, but then they kept their stand, you know, to show you that they know what they are doing. They are, they are not just going around. They have professionals there. They didn't just pluck people from the street. So I think the CBN is on a path. They clearly know what they are doing. In terms of policy making, Mr. Bajon, would the government decide to borrow more to maintain expenditure levels? Or would the government decide to cut back on commitments which may be politically sensitive? What do you think about that okay. in terms of policy making? Okay, I'll, I'll rather the government cut down on commitments because as it stands now, our debt is about 10% of our GDP. So borrowing to, um, you, um, to help balance the budget and help in development will further increase uh, our debt to GDP ratio. So it will further put this debt on the the younger ones who are coming, the future generation. So you, we, if we keep borrowing, then we might end up in a situation like, in a situation like uh, the Greeks or the Cyprus ended up with the GDP, uh, with a debt higher than the GDP. And then we have, we have to now um, take uh, harsh measures, which might include cutting wages and other things. So if, if we continue borrowing to balance our budget, it's going to affect the future. Do you agree? Uh, oh. And I'm then, sorry. I'm sorry, to come back on um, the issue of devaluation, I think we'll have to look at it critically because to answer this question, we have to look at other countries who have taken the decision to either devaluate or um, um, leave the currency the way it is. If we look at the issue of Russia, they also export um, crude oil a lot. So when this whole crude oil price went down, they, they allowed the currency to change as per the market detects. And 
I can believe they are doing better now than the Nigerian economy. They are, if we look at Venezuela, which decided to keep their currency and control, and it, it turned out to be a disaster. Exactly. Even though they, they, are, they are kind of, their economy is a little bit different from ours it's because the Russian economy is diversified. But the Nigerian economy is a money economy and 70% um, of our exports is petroleum. So I think devaluing the currency will affect us negatively. But if you look at um, Russia and Venezuela, an example, then it would seem it's to our advantage to devalue the currency. Any more opinions about the policy making that the government might adopt? Yes, um, in terms of uh, policy making, I believe that the economic team led by the Vice President, Professor, Professor Yemi uh, Osibanjo, they have all it takes to do some people call them the, the Lagos arm because uh, of uh, the people that constitute the team. However, there are some issues, there are some policies that we've started to witness. For example, the stamp duty, uh, uh, which uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria recently announced that every transaction above 8,000 naira will be charged uh, 50 naira for stamp duty. There is need to also diversify into uh, other, look into other ways of uh, or making other policies to cushion the effect of the dwindling uh, oil prices. So I believe that, um, and also to answer the question you asked him about commitment and uh, more spending, I believe that uh, when an economy does better when there is more spending, even if when, even it leads to other multiplier effects. For example, it's a conditional cha cash transfer. Okay, you have to take your your child to school. You have to immunize your child. You have to do this. You have to do that. Such kind of policies are needed in this uh, time of uh, economic uh, situation that we find ourselves. Mr. Sheldon, do you agree? More spending or cutting back? Hmm. What's your it depends. If the government has a plan on what to spend on that will bring uh, in future good effect and will be able to repay the debt, then it's good. But if there is no, what are we borrowing the money for? What is the borrowing going to do? We can't just borrow money to run the same cycle of things we've been doing. We need to build infrastructures that we can point out in the future that this is what we use the money to do. And this is what we want to use the money to do, and this is what it will generate back. If the government can go in that direction, I think it's positive for them to keep getting the money in the economy. Okay. So I want us to talk a little bit about where, you know, the root of this problem. This is not the first time that Nigeria has had this problem with, you know, the price of oil falling. In 1986, during the global oil glut, there was oversupply of oil and there was weakened demand because in 1986, new forms of energy were discovered. And so the demand for oil was drastically reduced. So there was a 48% drop in oil prices and the Naira was depreciated by 70%. So, you know, why did Nigeria learn from this, you know, event? Why did we keep going on with oil? Mr. Phillips, do you have an opinion about that? Um. Basically, uh, your your question is a captivating one. Um, the government, or I would say those officials, would not learn because of corruption. Corruption um, has it in so deep, and then um, they feel petroleum, as it is today, is the quickest way to get this cash so they can embezzle. So. If, if they had learned, if they had put the, the country first, I believe they should have learned at that time, you know, bring in some policies that would have cushioned what we are facing today. We might not have been in this state if uh, measures were taken. And that leads us to where we all started. We started talking of diversification. They are aware of this. They don't want to spend these monies in diversifying other sectors because it's, it's, it's going to be um, a long-term project, and there must be consistency of flow of cash. So why do we diversify? When we have the easy cool cash coming from the Niger Delta, 
coming from oil, let's export this oil, the cash comes in without stress, the embezzle. So the truth is, even when the economy goes down, it has little effect on these people. Like I said earlier, corruption. But you know, whenever we talk about diversification, we say diversification because we put the common man in focus. So as far as they are concerned, the economy doesn't affect them the way it affects the common man in Nigeria. So even if the oil price drops, they still fly abroad for medical treatment. They still send their children abroad to school. They still have um, their, their, even their food imported. It doesn't cut on that. Do you understand? So we, we, we have been crying on diversification because we put the common man in focus. This is where corruption blindfolds the eyes of these government officials of which they, okay, tomorrow with this Nigerian adage, permit me to use it, tomorrow it go better. You understand? So they feel even if it's down today, they have stocked their banks or their bank accounts. Tomorrow it will be better. They will bounce back again and they continue to embezzle. So we should look beyond that. We should diversify. It's beyond coming on a round table like this to discuss it. It's beyond enforcing policies taking a holistic measure to make sure, okay, from oil, we have other sectors. And from these sectors that will spring up, there will be job employment. You be, you see the teeming population, I mean the youth, you know, being employed, being engaged, you know, you know, you know, you know striving to see that they feed, you know, taking them off the streets. So we should diversify. And I just believe, I just believe, once we diversify, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, will be so much balanced. And then back to the question you once asked, the borrowing, borrowing, borrowing. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I've not seen a nation that borrowed and has developed. P correct me if I'm wrong. United States. United States. United States. No, United States, look, look at their, their democracy. How old is it? How old is it? You can't keep borrowing from the United States you just mentioned. There, is, there are statistics of third world countries and African countries like um, Zambia back in the 1970s. They kept borrowing, couldn't pay back. Yes. It became a very serious Ex problem. Exactly. It's because it became a so, serious problem so, in Africa. So why am I saying this? Yeah, in Africa. African countries, the we, more we borrow, the we, more we are we Nigerians. Are, okay, exactly. let's, let's use Africa's case study. That's the perfect. more you borrow, you keep paying. You will never end up paying except you're forgiving your debts, seriously. And then it keeps accru accruing. We have to pay a huge percentage annually. And then at the end of the day, before you even um, 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 focus on a little development, the debts you're supposed to pay has accrued to a level you cannot pay back. So we should diversify. We should cut on our borrowings. It's very, very essential. If it will cost us to suffer today and stop borrowing, and the future will be bright, then we start it. Can I, can I ask him a question? If we want to diversify, we need money, don't we? Yeah. So you said we should cut on our borrowing. If we don't have the resources to diversify, the economist says that if Nigerian economy, if there's no solution in the next six months, the economy might go into recession. Okay. That means we don't have enough money to diversify okay. because we don't have any infrastructure on ground. Okay. So if we want to diversify, what are we going to diversify with? Okay, um, you see diversification, where, where we all started from, before oil, we started from agriculture. But I don't want to delve into agriculture for now. Um, the Nigerian state has what it takes to diversify its economy. We should not beat around the bush to say where do we get these resources from. That is where the developed nations will always have advantage or an edge over us. We will always rely on them to forge ahead. We tend to let them see that we cannot do it except with their support. That is a very wrong notion. So you suggest privatization of this diversified industry? Of course, you can privatize some of them. Agriculture, for instance, you can privatize um, 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 the, the tourism sector. Look. Let me delve into tourism, for instance. Um, looking at 2014 statistics, the World um, Tourism Organization, it, it, it recorded about 
billion travels world over. So that is the fastest growing sector in the world today. That's the fastest growing industry. But is Nigeria ready for a tourism sector? That is where I tell you, if we decide to diversify, and if you look at the receipts people get, or these countries get from tourism, like in 2008, 2009, Turkey, for instance, they made about 20 billion US dollars. So you can, you, 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 you can see how much we are losing in terms of tourism. That is a sector which can diversify into. And then when you talk about the fund, don't, don't sit here to tell me there is no money in Nigeria that can make us diversify. Look, our politicians have stocked their bank accounts. There are monies which are being returned on a yearly basis that have been embezzled from the Nigerian economy. Where are these monies going into? These monies are brought back and then redistributed. So if we can focus most of these monies coming back into the tourism sector, I believe in the next 10, 20 years, it will be a wow. Um, like uh, what Comrade just said, that boils down to the issue, the political will. We saw cases of, and it was also, it also trended uh, on Twitter, we looted. The yeah. situation where $300 million was brought back and how did it end? It was also shared, or it was given to Colonel um, Dasuki for special services that today we are yet to know. Everything we are talking about here, you mentioned about Turkey. Yes, they have, the investors or tourists cannot come to a situation where there is no security. Exactly. They cannot come to a place where there are no roads. They cannot come and be sleeping on the floor. Now we need, yes, President Mohamed Boy has talked about the private sector-led economy. But we need the funds. We need the money to build the roads. We need the money to equip our military services. We need the money to make our, our country look good or to develop some of these beautiful sites that the tourists will come. So therefore, we need the political will to do this. So I think we need to consider borrowing. And we find out that President Muhammad Buhari is somebody, of course, we, 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 most Nigerians can attest that he's a man of integrity. From the little we've seen over these last six to seven months, we've seen past government officials, whether it is a winch hunt, whether it is not a winch hunt, but the most important thing is that they agreed that a particular sum of money that was not budgeted for was shared between some group of people for reasons best known to them that we are yet to know. So we need a stronger political will to, to, to uh, diversify, or else we'll be talking about diversifying our economy and diversifying the pockets of the officials. Exactly. Mr. Tesla, what do you okay. think? Yeah, I was touching on the issue of borrowing, where, where you said we, we have to borrow to diversify. Uh, I, I wanted to note that we, we really don't have to borrow Thank because you. right now we, we still have earnings. Yeah. Despite the fact that yeah. oil has fallen below exactly. 30, we're still earning something. Yeah. So we don't have to build all this infrastructure in one year or in four years. We can start little by little. It's a long-term project. It's a long-term project, yeah. We have to invest in things that will bring money to the Absolutely. government, and then we'll further use this money to continue the diversification. diversification. But also because know that they they, uh, our, our accounts were depleted by the last administration. Um, because if you can still remember, I can still remember when Governor Chibika Mechi and the then finance minister, Ms. Ngozo Konjiwala, were fighting over missing funds from the sovereign wealth front, from the federation account, and from other accounts that we may not know of. So, yes, President Muhammad Wai have tried with this single currency account by bringing our accounts together to know. We know what is in this economy. But we have other commitments that we must, um, uh, 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 we must fulfill. And as the country is, as, uh, as it presently is, I believe that we don't have much in our accounts.